What text should I learn in order? Learn wave dash, shuffle, and then anything character specific. Those are the three things you need to learn first. And that's kind of what I've just been doing here. Wave dash, shuffle, and anything character specific. So Marth, like pivot nares, pivot grabs, Falco, short up laser. That's all what that's all you want to start with. Peach, float, cancel aerials. Puff, auto cancel back air, multiple jumps with back air. Um Sheik, auto cancel fair, boost grab. You want to learn all that kind of stuff first. When I had 13,000, almost 14,000 people in my stream, and I wanted to give them some Melee content two years ago, and I needed them to get excited about it, what did I do? I did this. And I said, yeah, we're wave dashing, bro. We're wave dashing, isn't that cool? And we are loving it. We love the wave dash. And the reason we like the wave dash is because it allows us to change our position while still having our ground moves actionable. We wave dash, we can jab. Wave dash, jab, wave dash, up tilt, wave dash, down tilt, wave dash, forward smash, down smash, up smash, even if it's useless, we can still do it. Uh, wave dash, dash attack, wave dash, shine. We can do all that stuff. Wave dash F tilt. That's good too. How do you do it? Fantastic question, Adam. Um, imper impeccable question. So the way you wave dash is you press the jump button. You can jump. You can push it hard. You can push it lightly. Doesn't really matter. Then you push the trigger button, L or R, either one, whatever you prefer. And then you keep your controller angled down and to the right or to the left. And that's how you do it. You start learning your wave dash by... Uh, going straight down and you just do it slow. So you do this and you're like, okay, I got this and now I got this, or I'm doing it in place. You just do one then the other, or you try and do it like as fast as possible. So it looks like that. And you're like, okay, now I go down. Yeah, 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 go down. And then you're getting, then you get like this and then you move down and then you're going straight down and then you go to the side and then you go back and then you start doing it at a movement and you're really cool. Yeah, okay. You're grooving then. You're going to practice it now? <laughs> I believe you. Wave dashing is cheating and I'm reporting you. That's fair. Let me finish doing this first before you tell them. What's up, HDMI? Looks kind of useless. Nah, but you can crouch cancel out of it, so it's cool. It's cool, man. No, no, no. You know, actually, when wave dashing was first discovered and talked about on Smashboards, uh, like Chillin said it was useless. You guys can go roast him for that now. Chillin doesn't get roasted for anything, so that's fine. Um, so... Something I like doing with Falco is running in and wave dashing back, and then you can do like an aerial afterwards. You run and wave dash back, nair. You can just wave dash back, nair too, like if you're closer. It helps you reposition just a little bit. It takes a little bit longer than dash, which is okay. Um, your Roy was nasty when you were a kid. Don't let, don't let the don't let your adult self lie to you. But yeah, so the reason we did a bunch of wave dashes was because we're practicing. And practicing is very important. I rolled there. That's how you know I need to practice. So practice is key. If you can wave dash all the way facing one way, facing the other way, then you'll be able to not mess it up in matches. If you can do it all the way and you're like, I don't need to wave dash anymore, I would still disagree with you. I would say wave dashing is still good because it lets you connect with the game and always make sure that you're doing them well. And you might be like, well, what about Uncle Punch stuff? And I'm like, that's good. I think being too worried about the frames and everything can mess you up some too. I think Uncle Punch is good for confirming these things, but it's not necessarily required. Um, so, of course, I like Uncle Punch, but, you know, I just don't want people to be too distracted by uh, the numbers and thinking they have to be perfect. Or well, you can mess up your wave dash a little bit and you're still fine. I use wave dash notches, yeah. Let's see if I can get... I think that's what it looks like if I hit the notch. Yeah, it's pretty far. That's probably the notch. I don't try to use the notch much. I should. Yeah, I think it's notched. Maybe a little bit farther. Um, And so, yeah, I mean... There are some other things, and like everyone's talking about like combo practice. I can show you guys a little bit of what that looks like. I don't have Uncle Punch installed, so I can't really show you. But 
I can show you a little bit more of the movement stuff. And that's kind of what I like doing for practice anyway. Because I feel like if you can move, then you can combo. If you can move, you can edge guard. If you move, you can pressure. So I always say moving is really good. And so, you know, I'll even do just basic dashes like this. I think this is really fun. And we would do this on stream. I would have like hundreds of people. We would come in and we'd talk about how we like to practice. What's the value of doing this? Why does this matter? Don't you want to know how many dashes it takes for Falco to get across this stage? One, two, three, four, five. It's like five and a half or five and three quarters. We'll do it this way too. One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, it's like, it's like five. It depends on how hard you hit the stick or how long you keep it pressed. Uh, you'll notice it was a little different one way than the other way. That means your controller would be a little different. Mario is a little concerned about his fashion, but um, he's all right. We take out his knees. He's fine now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've, I, and, and so this is something that we would do on stream a lot. I kind of want to find a way to bring this back, but I haven't figured out how to do it yet. Because I think people like talking about practice. And I think practicing on stream is kind of cool. I wouldn't want to do it with my mains anymore, I don't think. Maybe do it with Sheik, when I'm trying to learn more Sheik. But I think it'd be fun. Um, so I would also talk about, like, okay, so we dash. Now it's combined wave dash. So we'll dash, wave dash back, dash, wave dash back. And then this, like, if you notice, if I start, like, I'm starting, like, let's say I'm starting in the middle under the platform. Look where I end up. I end up, like, pretty much the same spot, right? If I do like a big wave dash, I end up back where I started. So you can actually like do all these actions, wind up exactly where you were, and you'll be like, what's the point? The point is that you fake. It's like instead of going and doing this attack, you from the same position, you wave dash back. So it's very hard for your opponent to cover both your attack and your movement back. And so there's just something very simple about putting your tools together that feels really good. And of course, you know, you can just you can just do this and then like laser. And of course, you can, you know, dash one way than the other way and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's a command for my settings. Exclamation settings. <sighs> um, do I have any opinions on box or frame one controllers? Yeah, I think, uh, I think they're good for ergonomics. I think they have some advantages over GameCube controllers, but also some disadvantages. I think the uh, frame one the SDI on it and the pivot stuff on it is too strong and should be nerfed, but otherwise I think it's okay. From my understanding, I might need to learn more about it. Can you show us how to do that thing where you steal the edge but starting with you facing it like the one you used in Apex 2015? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so an application of wave dash is to, <laughs> is to grab the edge. Now, if you'll notice, if you hold down when you go when you go past the edge, you just keep going, right? So I, so what's the difference, right? You have to hold down, then let go. So you hold down, let go, and that's how you grab the edge. It's very quick, and especially because Falco falls so quickly, that's how you want to grab the edge. So this is really important, right? Like, imagine you imagine you have a fox that's really good at teching your down smash, and so you don't really want to down smash them again. Like, maybe you're out here, and you can down smash and get them, but maybe you're a bit late, they still tuck it. So you're like, I just want to grab the edge. So you, you act like you're going to do a down smash, and you dash the other way. And then you wave dash back. And so you want to make sure that you, right when you press to the side, you're wave dashing back, right? So that's what it looks like in, without fast falling. So you, uh, you're you looking this way, you dash, turn around. So that's what I did at Apex 2015. I just did a lot of that. Getting to the edge really quickly can really surprise your opponent because you can wait a little bit longer to do it too if you get it down. So I think practicing grabbing the edge, of course, do it on both sides of the stage. You want to make sure that you're, you know, it's very clean on both sides. Um, because, you know, some people only practice at one side and they get used to muscle memory one way. They can't do it the other side. And they're like, man, I'm just playing bad. No, you just didn't practice it. Um, also, some people are better at things on one side of the stage than the other. Little known fact. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. Yeah, like if I'm farther away, then like, like imagine if I'm right here, this won't get me to the edge, right? And so I need to, I need to pivot. So dash towards the edge first if I really want to get there. And of course you can go from the platform, right? So notice I hit the ground first. That's if you fast fall right away. So you have to make sure you kind of hold out and down and then let go. It's more complicated to get there from the uh, platform. How do you practice mixing up when you go in? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, am I on Metify? No, I'll be on Patreon. Um, <laughs> I just want to shoot Mario's legs. Uh, so if you want to do plat, so mixing up going in, I got two different questions. So like 
the way you mix up going in is through this work I'm showing you. So if you change your dash length, you change the way you go in, right? So this is a full dash, but let's now imagine that I just like go for a quick attack without dashing. Now let's imagine I go for a dash, then I go for an attack. Like, like if I start here and I go for a quick attack. Oh, hold on. I missed my fast watch. I do it too early. This is about where I land if I just do an attack immediately. I go to the middle of the stage if I do another dash first. Um, and so you can also like you can also dash like a little bit, do a move like right here. So you can change. So you can go here, here, or here with your attacks if you want to. And so, on as, you usually don't need to go farther than this with your attacks, so it's not really worth practicing that kind of stuff a lot. And obviously you can do stuff that hits here as opposed to here, here as opposed to here. Obviously if you're like right here, you can just down air like this and it'll just hit, right? And you can, or and you can also do other stuff like run forward, retreating down air. So there's a lot of things you can do when you're mixing up going in. I haven't even talked about laser yet, but if you're just looking at the way you want to go in, this is what you do: is you just practice the different options you're going to use to actually attack someone, and then you just see where they go on the stage, because you're hitting an opponent that's somewhere on the stage. So you have to figure out where you're trying to go to hit them. So practice the things you want to do to go and hit them. You know. And of course there are other things you can do, like you can practice cornering someone. Imagine they're like right here. And so you wanna practice your back air. So you might wanna try and pivot your back air. Or you might wanna, so you do that and you dash the other way in back air. Or you can fake it, right? Or you can go up and come down with the back air. Wave dash in like you're gonna do it. Go for back air, wave dash. Notice that if you jump quickly enough after wave dashing, you retain some momentum from your jump. So like if I'm jumping this way, I only go this far, wave dash jump, I go like a little bit farther. So you retain momentum, you can really pressure them. Like look, I'm in the middle of the stage, I can pressure someone in the corner with this wave dash first. So there's a lot of things you can do when you start really thinking about how to corner pressure someone and how to put your moves out. And you know, of course, like, again, I haven't even talked about laser. So I mean, if I want to practice laser, you know, this is the way I normally do it. I try to do like two lasers. I usually do them lower because doing the lowest ones are the hardest. Now, I, you can shoot lower lasers than this, but you need to, like, not fast fall. So notice these are, so that is actually, like, this is actually a lower laser. Not this one. Not this one. I don't normally do this. I, this That laser is low. I think it should be lower. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit lower. The heights at the bottom all kind of get bunched up, so it can be a little hard to tell. But the non-fast fall one, and you can kind of see it coming off the platform easier. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, so that one you can see it's like on his feet. Like it's very, very low. So you can kind of see the difference in like fast falling versus not fast falling, coming off a platform, how that's going to impact your laser. And I don't really practice doing a really low one because I don't think you need one that low. Um, I just do, you know, I'll just do like that. That's the one I practice because that's plenty low and it comes out faster. So that's what I like more. Uh, but yeah, like Falco being so vertically minded can just play from platforms a lot. He can do, he can notice he can run forward. He can just come, he can uh, not fast fall. He can run off and double jump. He can short hop off. And notice if he short hops off, he can actually do this. So, uh, you know, there's a lot he can do there. Double jump back. There's a lot Falco can do. But anyway, you're starting with your laser. You try to move off your laser as quickly as possible. This is something I would do on stream a whole lot. And I found it really beneficial to show people that like, you don't want to drop your frames off of your laser. You do it the other way. Dash back. And you don't need to overcomplicate and do a trillion dashes with Falco. Just do your laser, do your dash back. You get extra time to see what they're doing. So you can do stuff like uh, la laser, da like laser dash back, back here, laser, jump backward then you can do a delayed they see it. it's like imagine you do this you see a fox coming in like a full hop so you just wave land away then you pressure their landing you can do stuff like that or the fox comes in over you you double jump over them land on them with down air a lot of stuff you can do um of course you run forward so instead of doing laser dash you do dash laser so i just kind of turn the concept on its head So you just do a dash and laser. And the reason that's good is just because like, 
if you're always lasering then dashing and you never do like stuff like this or you um you never do anything like that like everyone's gonna like not really respect your movement forward a lot unless they see a laser first so i think just being able to move and just hit people is pretty good that's just kind of how i think about it anyway um but yeah i mean i kind of see what you guys have questions about because i talked about a lot of stuff I feel like you Waveland more than anyone else. Waveland's really cool. So I actually will practice doing this. I was actually thinking about just showing you guys this. So you can practice doing this. Like, look, if I'm middle platform and I get the good fast fall, then I'm back under front platform. If I don't fast fall, hold on, missed it. Then I still, go, like depending on my Waveland, I still go pretty far, but I'm go a little bit farther forward, which is pretty good. Because then, like, imagine, even if I even if I get the jank wave land, which is honestly still fine because I just go farther forward, I can do this instead. So now I land in the middle. So I'm middle platform, middle, or side platform. I am under here, and I am now threatening most of the stage, uh, or covering so much of the stage with this double jump. And because I can fake it uh, with this wave land, it gives me a lot of mileage. And if I wave land, I'm obviously holding down so I can just punish someone for rushing in, trying to stop this mix up. That's pretty good. Double jump backward, wave land. If I jump early enough, I'm up here, come down with something. So yeah, I think it's just worth thinking about um, how how to move around and how to, uh, how to threaten and how to use all your character's tools well. Cause double jump's not bad with Falco. You rise quickly, you have such a quick fast fall and so like I acted like, oh, I'm gonna land on platform. Nope, I'm gonna land with this. I land with laser instead. Thought I was gonna land on platform. Come down with two quick lasers, you know, stuff like that. Which characters benefit from platform camping and which ones don't? Uh, Falco can platform camp, Fox can platform camp. Uh, Falcon can kind of sometimes. Fox and Falco are the best at it. Uh, Falcon can do it. I mean, like, as long as you're faster than, like, say, a Puff or Peach, you can do it, right? So, like, technically, Puff can platform camp Peach. Um, Peach probably could maybe platform camp Puff sometimes. It'd be kind of weird, though. I've never seen it happen. Um, I've seen a Ganon camp Peach on Congo Jungle 64. That was weird. Um, that was around the time KJ64 got banned. <laughs> Go figure. She can platform camp some, yeah. Yeah, Fireball. I'm just a scrub Puff main. This is blowing my mind. You can do a lot of this stuff with Puff. Like you just practice like on the platform. Um, how far do I go out with my jump, my wave dash? Do I go all the way down? What timing do I jump at? Go back, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, is this gonna be on YouTube? I will put it on YouTube if you guys think it would be good. Cause I used to do this a lot. What is in Falco's pockets? Does he have pockets? Oh, I guess he does. Looks like they're, are they zipped up? I think they might be. But yeah, double shine with Fox is okay. You just got to make sure you're really tight with it. I think it's okay once in a while. Like, again, spacies. I'm not sure about the rest. You have to see what Hacks does. I have a question on what options Doc Mario has for shield pressure. Yeah, sure. I'll show you. It is so weird that this is not a Falcon. It freaks me out. Um. So, Doc's shield pressure, not the best. Um, if you are, like, here... You can space jab and you won't get grabbed. If you're like here, you could get grabbed off your jab. It depends on how quickly they react. Um, jab down smash is really strong. Um, and then people decide they want to hold shield for that. You just jab grab. Um, pretty classic old doc mix up. But again, like if you're right here, even if Falcon's, I can't hit Falcon, I can hit his shield right here. Also, he's moving a little bit because his idle animation. That's why I hit him. But yeah, I can hit Falcon's shield right here. And so I can always pressure right here, and then I can like jab and down smash his shield, or then I can go jab and grab. So you don't have to be right on them. Spacing can be better sometimes. However, if you are spacing, you know, they can hit you out of shield. So you can like jab up tilt if they're gonna jump out of shield. Um, stuff like that can be good. Uh, I think like, uh, like, as you can see, my jab and um, down smash both, both whiffed, I'll show you. So my, my back air hits, I might've drifted in a little bit. So if you want to be like a little closer and do that, they might not think you're going to do anything else. So you can turn around up tilt, like back air up tilt, hit them jumping out of shield. 
Uh, so it's that kind of stuff. I think back air is kind of cool, and I don't think it's used a lot by Doc and Mario players, like, in some ways. But if you hit someone with back air, I mean, look at Doc's back air angle. Like, it's so good. They're just dead. That's pretty sick. Um, obviously, you hit forward air, it's gonna be really safe on shield, but, like, I don't think it nets you a grab or anything. So it's, it's hard to get out, because they can just hit you on your startup. Um, let's see... You can space F tilt, I guess. Doesn't really give you much, but you can. I think what what you want to do is like throw out moves sometimes, and also kind of like let them jump or something, and like up tilt or back air them, um, or let their shield go down and try to shield poke them with like up air stuff like that. Because up air gets some good punishes. Uh, up B cancel if you want. Yeah, I think that's safe. Yeah, sure. What are good ways Marth can escape platform tech punishes? Uh, it depends on which ones he's in. Slide off is often gonna help him. Um, sometimes buffered spot dodge will help. Actually, I'll just show you some Marth stuff. So, with Marth, we do a lot of the same things as with Falco. Notice how far this wave dash goes. Look at this gamer. Now, if I were doing this, like, in actual practice, I would be doing it like this. Because you want the action to fully stop. You don't want to spam it. There's no advantage to being like, yeah, yeah. There's no advantage to doing that. It doesn't give you anything. You're not going to be using it in matches, except for sparingly. And if you're doing it in matches, you'll want to practice it like this. Or you'll want to do it like this. You're not, so you're not going to like spam it. You know what I mean? That's not really how you people play in matches. So always make sure you're practicing like the way you're going to play in matches. Very important. Um... So, uh, yeah, I'll see you, Rihanna. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, you want to make sure you're going forwards, backwards, both ways across the stage, all that stuff. Then you get some dashes going. And then, you know, I talked about, I didn't talk about this with Falco, but with Marth, you can change the rhythm of your dash dance. And I let Marth fully stop before I go sometimes. And so I speed, and so sometimes I'll stick, hold a rhythm for a little bit just to see what it feels like. And I might speed it up a little bit. Or I might do something like this. Change my rhythm a little bit so it's slow, fast, slow. Or I might do too fast and a slow. And so like, so you can change, and so if I'm keeping this movement quick, I'm still shifting my position with it. So there's a lot you can do with movement practice. And I'm kind of just showing you a bunch of different examples of things. You don't really need to go much faster than this. This is pretty ridiculous already, honestly. But you can go faster if you really want to. Um, so there's some stuff you can do dash, and then you have dash, wave, dash. What? You can see it's not something I use as much as it would probably be beneficial for me to use. So I have to run much farther with Marth before I can turn back to where I started than with, than with Falco usually. But we get there. So we're like going, you know, to like past center stage for us to get back to right under the platform. So if I want to go past where I started with my wave dash back, I have to run farther, of course. And then, you know, you can do more complex stuff where you like, you know, you wave dash back, you jump, wave dash back, jump. And this is just it by itself, which is good, right? So like, imagine you're like, imagine you have like someone's edge dashing right here. You want to jump like this, right? So you want to, you want to move back. So you're going to re retain your momentum if you jump quickly enough. So they're right here, wave dash, jump. Oops. Put out forward air. Or imagine like you're just playing against a really aggressive player. You know they want to, you know they're coming for some sauce. They're, they're invincible close to you. Get away, you know, stuff like that. Um, and you can just jump forward if you want, so you can go slightly forward. So imagine I'm center stage, slightly, slightly backward. So I don't, I don't drift all the way forward. Sometimes, sometimes I drift all the way forward. Sometimes I, sometimes I fast fall. So notice I'm like sometimes going forward, sometimes backwards, despite jumping about the same time. So you can kind of think about um, 
how all of these different actions and combinations of things influence your opponent and move your tools around. So like, so I'm auto canceling this because I'm not uh, fast falling it. I didn't do that too late. But you can do this, like imagine you wanna um, drift into like someone's shield and really space it finely, or someone's just crouching. Like you confirm they're crouching when you jump. So you just like, okay, well I'm gonna drift into you a little bit, hit you with Nair, push you away. So you can't get the punish. Then you can go into down tilt. A lot of things you can do. Um, so just giving you guys a little bit of ideas there. Do you pay much attention to wave, la wave dash link? They usually assume the longer the better. That's a great question. So let's imagine... Um, so this is actually something that gets Marth players a lot. This will get me a lot too. So if I'm trying to hit like... Like imagine there's an opponent here and I'm like here and I want to get away. Like I miss with this forward smash, right? Like maybe if they just wanted to come forward and hit me slightly. Like I miss them a lot of the times because I like go back too far. Like I'm still sliding backwards when I do this. So I need to do like a, I need to do like this, right? Where it's a shorter wave dash and just not angle it as far. And you can see sometimes I, I do it in place. Sometimes I do it while I'm sliding. So if I do it, if it's while I'm sliding, it's going to be safer and maybe easier to tip, but I might also just go too far so you can get punished in your lag. So you have to make sure like you're, you're timing it where it either keeps you in place or if you are going to slide, that's all right. Bonjour, Hagrid. So um, also keep in mind if you're being aggressive, this is a, this is a good option to poke people with. Wave dash down tilt. I like this option. This is me trying to go farther with the down tilt. This is not as far. Hold on. So you notice I got way more wave dashes in there. Um, and so if my opponent is like here and I'm here, I don't want to do this, right? I'm going to be inside them. I just want to do like a little one or probably like smaller than that. Probably even smaller than that. Like that? Like a very shallow wave dash. If I want to wave dash down tilt them. You see what I mean? Obviously, I could probably just walk here and down tilt them. Um, you know, I can also wave dash back, wave dash forward, then it's different. But uh, that's kind of how that works. So with Marth, you really want to control your wave dash length. And obviously, if you're someone like Luigi or Ice Climbers, you really want control of it because that's your main way of moving around. So yeah, I mean, there are some other things that I can kind of talk to you guys about. But I always do, I do a little bit of pivoting practice like this. There's a new way to like, if you have like a controller for it, you can do, um, you can do the empty pivot stuff first, but I don't really know how to do that. So I just do like it the other harder way where you just have to like time it really well. So I'm jumping, so I'm dashing one way and then flicking the other way. And then I um, push A. And this is a pretty good option because like you move backward and then you put out something safe that's gonna like come out at a bunch of different timings. And it's also good against crouch cancel. So that's pretty cool. Very safe, very safe play you can do here. You can also, this is uh, retreating fair. I do use C stick for this because you just lose so much distance otherwise. This is particularly hard to do going this way. So you really want to make sure you practice this one. You don't really need to do both. Doing the second one just lets you know how fast you did the first one, honestly. So you don't have to do it that early. You can just you can go farther forward. Pretty good option against Fox. I think it's decent against Falcon. I'm not actually that sure. You can do other things. You can wave land out of this. You can double jump. I don't know what the value of that is, but you can do it. I tend to practice on Battlefield a lot. When I'm practicing more intensely, I practice on other stages. Yeah, if you, say, yo, if you want to get your uh, auto cancel Nair, yeah, you just do it. I'm fast falling like, as soon as possible. You just have to make sure you Nair really early too. That'll auto cancel. It's pretty cool. I don't use training packs yet. I will. But I, I'm still used to, pra like, there are things that the training pack still won't let me practice, like a lot of neutral stuff. So I still view, like, what I do as more beneficial for me but like the nice thing about the training packs is they help me practice all this stuff that like i wouldn't have known how to practice like a bunch of sdi and tech stuff and slide off stuff that's all gonna be really good for me to practice 
And so I'll be able to get caught up with what everyone's doing pretty quickly because I just have to use the stuff that's like already there and really easy to practice. No, I don't use Z. I think one thing I haven't touched on yet is a little bit of edge stuff. So you can just practice your refreshes. Oh, that's not a back here. You want to practice your reverse edge dashes if you're Marth, your um, up B stalls if you're Falco, all that stuff. Then you want to practice, like if you're Marth, you want to practice doing uh, this. Well, yeah. This, 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 and this. Oh, and also, well, hold on. Oh, a little bit late. I don't do this. I, this option is good, but I don't do it enough. So that and that. So you know impact land stuff's really good. When I practice this, I get it down really well. A little high. There we go. And you can go a little bit backward, right? So like I'm going a little bit forward when I do this still. But yeah, that's pretty much like, a lot of Marts still don't use all this stuff. And I think it'll make getting back on the stage easier, especially as people get better at stage guarding him. Um, so yeah, practicing edge stuff you can do here. I know you'll want the uncle punch for how good your edge dashes are, but with Marth, that doesn't matter so much as doing the other options well. So you can just kind of do that however. Would up tilt work? Mm. People aren't going to be close enough to get hit by up tilt. If you could up, if you could, you can no impact land up tilt, but honestly, you're just going to be better off forward airing most of the time. The only time up tilt's better is if someone like waits, like they're on the platform and they jump over your fair and hit you. Then you'd want to do this just for the later timing. How do you make wave dash easy for beginners? You just start slowly. So you tell them, okay, you jump, tell them to jump. Then you tell them to jump and press trigger button. <laughs> the crowd gets surprised. That's weird. Uh, anyway, I was listening for that for a second. So you uh, you um, you jump, press the trigger button, then you jump and hit air dodge down, and you just do that sooner and sooner. And eventually, it looks like this. So you're just going straight down, and then you have them do it to the sides till they get faster at that. Don't have to rush it. And then it looks like this. And you just have them do that. You have them do this. And then eventually, when they get good enough, or they're just moving and doing it, then you have them do wave dash. And do dash, wave dash back. Dash, wave dash forward. Dash, wave dash forward. Dash, wave dash back. Dash, wave dash down. Dash, wave dash down is pretty good, especially with Marth. That's good to do too. Not too hard either. The use of no impact land down tilt is, um, is that, so imagine you're like, so here's the range of a uh, fair. Hold on. So if you're like here, you're going to dodge the fair. Down tilt hits you being at the range where you dodge fair and you try to hit Marth. Or if you're trying to hold down against uh, fair, then if you just come back up a little bit closer to the stage, you can tip her down tilt that spacing too. And then you can push them away. So it's pretty good. Um... A lot of people want to grab or CC there. So, it's pretty good. What are some good approaching options with Marth? A Marth doesn't really approach well. Like, you can run up and grab sometimes. You can um, fare someone if they're not crouching a bunch. Um, you can run up and, like, kind of nair in place, depending on what you think they're going to do in the matchup. Um, you can run up and, like, side B Falco's laser startup, and that'll work okay. You, um... But I yet yeah, poking with down tilt, covering stuff with fair, once in a while grabbing if you really want to. That's going to be the main thing. No impact land grab. I don't think you need to grab. Again, grab is not going to really reach where you need it to. Like it's just they're just too far away. Like grab will reach like right here or whatever. I mean maybe that'll get you in something. Like especially if you're playing against Fox, but I don't know. It's a lot of holding back. No, you can still. So like Marth pokes. So Marth it can come in and poke. He can run in and poke. Or he can run in and like, he can run in and control space. So Marth just is not like, 
Imagine, Jed, if you ever played, you've played traditional fighting games. Martha's a zoning character. So zoning characters don't go in, but they can take space. So you can run in and take space like this. And if they run into you, cool, but otherwise you're taking space. And sometimes you're faking doing that. That's how that works. It feels nice to take space in this life. Facts. Welcome, Jet Fuel. Is Pivot F Smash worth learning? If you're just starting out, it's not your priority. If you can do your basic tech and you want to be able to kill Puff and probably Peach a little better, yeah. Who do you want added to Smash? Waluigi. Anyway, do you guys like have uh, any other questions about this? Um, cause this is mainly what I wanted to do, um, here. And I just wonder if you guys thought this was valuable. How do you practice shadow boxing? I am probably not going to go over that, um, in detail, but here's what I'll tell you. All of the stuff I've been sh talking about is your foundation for shadow boxing. So imagine that someone like, imagine you're doing like a down tilt and you're thinking about how they beat it. And so you're thinking about like... So you're thinking about like, oh, if I do this, if I do this in a down tilt and they beat that, then instead I'll do like this and I'll beat them. And then they're like, okay, well, they just wait. And so you're like, okay, well, I do this and then I go hit them or then I take some stage. And you think about that and you just do it as quickly as possible and you rotate it as much in your mind as you can. And it's really good. Jet Fuel, there's nothing wrong with going in as Marth. You just have to know that how you're breaking rules to do it. What is an auto cancel? An auto cancel is when the game gives you like regular landing lag. So if you look at me here, like look how long I sit on the ground. I sit on the ground for like a while before getting up. So notice how much quicker I get up now that I'm L canceling. L canceling is gonna be canceling my lag. It's gonna be like having it basically, cutting it in half. I don't sit on the ground as long. Um, I cannot auto cancel my down air what i can do so this is me auto canceling my down air if i do this so the move is done and i hit the ground i it wasn't done there this is me uh, auto canceling my down air so i'm not l canceling here i'm just doing my regular landing lag so i have less lag but um i didn't have to l cancel or anything and so some moves you can auto cancel from short hop. Mart's Nair you can auto cancel from short hop. Mart's Nair you can auto cancel from short hop. Mart's forward air if you do it early enough you auto cancel it. I'm not L canceling these. If I do it late, notice how I like kind of sit on the ground for a second. This is L canceling it. Look how much faster that is. So I'm getting landing lag. Um, Falco can auto cancel his back air if he does it right away. Um, Mars auto cancel up air. You can auto cancel your up air. Auto cancel your back air. So you can auto cancel a lot of moves, but you won't be able to fast fall a lot of them. That's the, that's the trade off. Now you can auto cancel Nair. That's why auto cancel Nair is so good. Cause you get the hits you want, you get the good hitbox and you can fast fall it and you get the auto cancel. That's why it's so strong. I started using more light shield. feel like I'm light shielding too much, eating too much shield stun tips around to use light shield and when not to. If you're on a platform and you want to get pushed off, light shield's okay. Um, don't overdo it. Um, like some, what a lot of people do that I see is they hard shield. So people will try to shield poke them and then they light shield right after. So you can change your shield size. You don't have to just do one or the other. Um, also, if your shield's getting small, switching to light shield is okay. Um, if a Falco is on you and you're not really good at dealing with the pressure, you can always just light shield to get pushed away sometimes. All right. I think we've gotten a lot of this stuff covered. I think this will probably actually be an interesting YouTube video. Let's see how people like it. Let's see if I want to do more stuff like this. Yeah, we'll do the Marth Guide Part 2 eventually.